Hey, good folks. This week we are looking at Colossians um, chapter 1, verses 13 through 20. Today we're only focusing on verse 18. We're looking at two aspects, two, two firstborns in this passage. One firstborn uh, over or of creation and firstborn from or of the dead. Two different things, although connected, they are, they're connected. One, that he is over all creation. Two, that he is over, has authority over, and is supreme in the new creation. And so those two things do go together. Both are bound up with, with Jesus Christ. And so as we dive into this in verse 18 today, um, you know, yesterday we looked at verses uh, 16 and 17, that uh, uh, by him all things are created, everything that is is created um, in him, by him, for him. And so all of us are tied up with that. And uh, everything it must bow to him as Lord. He is over all of the dark powers. He is over uh, those malevolent powers and is over those benevolent powers. Uh, and, and, and he is our creator, our Lord as well. Verse 18, he is also head of the body, the church. Now let's stop right there. What does it mean that he is head of the body, the church, in this body metaphor? When Paul uses that in other places, it talks about the necessity of the parts of the body working in unison, working together. Even though they're diverse, they are unified, uh, and that diversity and unity is found in Jesus Christ. We've talked about that before. Now, when we look at this verse, what does it mean that he is the head of the church? Well, head has a lot of different meanings. Um, interestingly enough, David Garland, who was one of my professors in his excellent commentary on Colossians, um, said that head, beginning, and firstborn all derive from the same root in Hebrew. Uh, so that's interesting, that being the head, also being firstborn. Well, we even do that in English. He is the head of the committee. He is the head of the class. He is, which means he's first, he is supreme, or she is supreme, whatever the she is the head of that, whatever it might be. Um, but head can also indicate source or origin. Uh, and so as we look at this, when we think of Jesus as also the head of the body, the church, the emphasis there is upon Christ, that Christ is the director of the body. Christ is the one who guides the body. Christ is the one who gives the body life. Uh, he is the one who is authority over the body. And so that just as he is, the, uh, he is supreme in all of creation, he is Lord of all creation, so he is that unifying point of creation. He is the unifying point of the church, and that in him we are unified. And so the body should, as it lives out faithfully, being his body, uh, living worthily of Christ, then, then we will reflect that order that belongs in creation. Creation has been contaminated by sin. Of course, it's been corrupted uh, and is broken. But the church is supposed, God's people in Christ Jesus, through the enabling of the Holy Spirit who indwells every believer, we are to reflect that unified diversity that um, has a purpose, and that is to, uh, to glorify Christ, to be sure, but to glorify Christ by carrying out his redemptive work faithfully. Uh, we don't exist for ourselves. We don't exist for our continuing existence. We exist for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. We exist to accomplish what he has called us to accomplish, and that is uh, to live out faithfully the Christian life, to expand the kingdom work, to continue to proclaim good news. And that's done as we proclaim that good news and as we live it out faithfully with one another, of course, but also outside the walls of the church to those that we come into contact with, we should reflect that, that, um, that shalom that comes with Jesus Christ as it was supposed to be in the beginning, God's peace, God's wholeness, God's lack of nothing that is supposed to be ours that we have restored in Jesus Christ. I hope that you know that you have that wholeness restored in Jesus Christ. I don't have everything I want. Or, uh, that's not what it's talking about. 
<clears throat> and yes, you are going to leave this physical life. We all understand that. But we have everything that we need. We are whole in the sense of uh, there is no lack in us. We have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ, the, in, the in, indwelling of the Holy Spirit, who enables us, though not perfectly, enables us to live the Christian life and to live out that new uh, citizen of heaven status here on this earth. We are to be colonizing it. We are to be living it out, uh, so to speak. And so when it says he is our head, he is the beginning of the church. He is the source of life for the church. He is the origin of the church. He is the, uh, the director of the church. He is the one uh, who is supreme over the church. And he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Here he is that other firstborn phrase. And here, I think it's more sequential. Does it mean he has authority over? Absolutely. But it also is a sequ sequence of beginning. Uh, he is the first in that beginning. What beginning? The beginning of new life, new creation. He is the beginning of that. He is the firstborn um, of that. And what does that mean? It means that everyone who is a follower of Jesus Christ, who has believed in him, we also... Uh, because of his resurrection, of course, that's what it's referring to, his resurrection, we too will be resurrected, and we too will have this new creation life. But we have the foretaste of that now. Do we have it in its fullness? No, because I'm still in this flesh. I'm still in this corrupt, fallen uh, body. But I'm going to get a new one. Praise the Lord. I want a new one, and I'm looking forward to getting that new one. So I'm going to have a resurrection. If you're a believer in Christ, you're guaranteed that resurrection as well, because Jesus is not only the firstborn of the dead, he is the first fruits. Uh, and, you know, interesting, we're going to be talking about that on Wednesday nights here at Troy First Baptist, and we're going to be looking at the spring feast of the Lord uh, in Israel's calendar, and how all of those are accomplished in Jesus Christ. Those first four have already been fulfilled, already been accomplished. The last three, the fall feast, uh, are still to be accomplished to Jesus' second coming, the rapture of the church and the, the uh, refining of Israel and the salvation of Israel and the setting up the uh, kingdom of God in this new creation. So that's all uh, looking forward to. So we're going to be covering those in Utah, in, uh, in, on Wednesday night Bible study. And if you'd like to be a part of that, I invite you to come. I think it's a fascinating study, not because I'm teaching it, because the material is fascinating. Um, I can take the most fascinating material and somehow make it seem boring, but I try not to. Uh, but that's just the way I feel about it. But anyway, it's a fasc fascinating material, and it is amazing to see how the details fit with Jesus without twisting and con convoluting and all that, doing gymnastics with it how it fits the redemptive mission and work of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So we're going to be looking at that. But he's also, uh, he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. Doesn't he have first place now? Yes, he has first place in truth, in reality. But the fact is, that is not acknowledged here on this earth. Creation still longs for uh, that consummation still longs for humanity to be what we're supposed to be. And so that is coming. And as we live that out, we promote that. But it is finally going to come in this, this second coming of Christ when he establishes the kingdom reign here on this earth. So you have both of those things coming together uh, in this passage. You have Jesus who is over all creation, who is prior to creation, who existed uh, as, as the eternal Son of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit together. And then there is creation, and it is in Christ. It's located in him. It is by him. It is for him, for his glory. Um, all of creation is to be subsumed under his lordship. And even though the malevolent forces may not bow down to him, one day they will. They, he's not going to become lord of them. He is lord of them now. They're just in rebellion against his lordship. And so we're going to see that reality when it says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is lord. It's not only human beings. It's those uh, in heaven, those under, on earth, and those under there. Everything is going to declare that he is um, to be praised, that every knee shall bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so everyone will make that confession. Um, right now, as God is calling out a people from Jew and Gentile himself, which is what um, 
Pentecost speaks of, the celebration of Pentecost, the two loaves that are presented uh, represents the two uh, as one offering, the, the Jew and Gentile together baked with leaven because we still have sin in this life. And the Holy Spirit uh, unites us in Christ Jesus, baptizes us, if you will, if you prefer that language, into Christ and uh, we become his body or his bride, depending on which metaphor you use. The, the, the truth is still the same. And so I pray that you know that wholeness. I pray that you know that that unifying uh, person of Jesus Christ who gives us the shalom of God, the peace of God, uh, so that we can be whole and have purpose and meaning in our life and that we can live uh, a life that is befitting the calling of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and I pray that that is yours because it's the greatest. It is to be liberated. It is to be set free. It is to live a life that is full. Now, you might not uh, be a billionaire and you might not be the most successful business person and you might not have the best gardening techniques or might not be the best musician or whatever, but your life is still full and whole and is, is joy-filled and I pray that that's yours right now as we have the forced taste of what we're going to have in his reign uh, when the new creation is made, uh, new heaven and new earth come together. And we are just experiencing the beginnings of that now as it's moved into reality and it's beginning to take effect. Um, we're going to see uh, the, the fullness of that one day. And I hope, I pray that you're going to experience that. And you get to do that by faith in Jesus Christ, trusting his finished work on the cross for you, his resurrection from the dead. We're going to celebrate that very soon as we celebrate Easter. By the way, while I'm on that subject, we're going to be having our celebration at Troy First Baptist. You may not know this, uh, but we had a water line break and it flooded our sanctuary. So we're meeting in our fellowship hall right now. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday, we're going to be going to two services. And this is the schedule. It'll be nine o'clock to 10 o'clock worship, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock small group in Sunday school, 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock worship. And the reason we're doing that is because we don't have enough room to fit everybody in comfortably. Uh, especially I know that some have expressed concern about uh, uh, illness and virus and so forth. And we don't mandate that you wear a mask. We encourage if we're crammed in this Sunday, grab a mask and wear one. I know I don't like wearing them either. I can't breathe with them. And I just, uh, I just don't. Uh, but we're encouraging you to know, do that when we're crammed in on top of one another. But we are going to be going to two services next week um, just to try to accommodate everyone and to be able to spread out better. We met with insurance adjuster and others this morning. It looks like it's going to be a long time before we're back in the sanctuary. I'm going to be meeting with leadership folks this Sunday afternoon to be formulating plans and talking about stuff. And we'll be letting our church congregation know about all of that uh, as soon as we have something to present. So uh, so we're going to be doing that. That's going to be happening. That two services, not this Sunday, the next Sunday. Not this Sunday, the next Sunday. Got it? Okay, great. Remember the schedule. 9 to 10, worship. 10 to 11, Sunday school. 11 to 12, worship again. Hey, listen, I love you. More importantly, God loves you, and he gave his son, Jesus Christ. You might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life. And what's the third one? That's right, joy indescribable right here and right now. I pray that that's yours. I pray that you know the love of God through Jesus Christ, and you have that wholeness, the shalom of God, uh, that is yours through him. Uh, hey, listen, uh, God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.